Welcome back to my Excel for Scientists tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about how to visualize your data within Excel. If you want to walk through all of this with me, you can use the link below in the description to download these files so you can walk through these with me just like it's a course. And you can also use a link in the description to download my Excel cheat sheet that's going to walk you through how to create all of these um, visualizations as well um, in an easy PDF that's completely free to download as well. So to get started today, we're going to work through how to make a line plot and then also adding error bars onto your plot. And again, we're going to be working on the same type of data looking at um, mental disorder prevalence in different countries. So now we're going to do a line plot. And so what I actually want to see is how did these change through time? So line plots are a little bit better for showing trends than scatter plots are. So I'm going to select all of this, go up to insert, and instead of clicking this scatter plot over here, I'm going to come up to this line plot. And now again, we see that it is pulling in that um, year data as Y axis data. So we don't want that. We want it to instead go to select. We're going to select our horizontal axis is going to be the year. And we're going to remove series one. And so now we can see our two um, axes. And so what I instead want to do is edit this and add, give it its name, and then this, give it its name. So now we can see what these actually mean. So we can actually tell now where it's going through time. If we wanted to add markers onto this, as always, we're going to delete off our chart title and add on axes titles. So here we're going to have prevalence and percentage, percent, there we go. And we can put year here. There you go. So this is basically the simplistic nature of it. So we have a basic line plot here. Now we can see kind of when things increase and decreased over time. So now we're going to do the line plot. So this again is very, very, very Excel. Okay, so we're gonna again come in here, doing the same things again, just increasing it. So I'm just gonna do six, 16, Ariel, bald, Black, 11, Ariel, bold, black, black, 11, Ariel, Ariel, bold, black, 16, Ariel, bold, and black. That did the wrong one, guys. Black, there we go, okay. Again, I want to get rid of these lines and I'm going to format my axes. So I'm gonna add a solid line to all of my axes. So now I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to, again, add that solid line, bump it up to one point, and I'm probably going to um, change this to two at least. There we go. So that makes that line cleaner and add in the tick marks to the outside. There we go. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm actually going to change this alignment. And so I'm going to set the minimum to four, and this would be kind of an insert, or if you're just trying to show the trends, this I'm going to pull up into my thing, make bigger, again, do all the same things I've been doing. So make sure that it's actually uh, black and within the chart area. 
and I'm going to add a border to this whole chart. So the same things we've been doing, make sure it's black, go up, okay. Then I want to change these. So one thing is you can choose to add a marker or not add a marker. I think I want a marker here. I think it's kind of bothering me that there's no marker. And we can make the markers kind of small so that it's just showing it there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this color because I don't like. So we're gonna make that black. And the marker color and the line color are two different colors. So, and you can see that this marker has a, looks like it has a border on it. Um, so that's the line, the marker, the border, we're gonna do no line. So now you can just see kind of, and we can make those marker colors a little bit bigger. So go into marker options and bump it up. And then come in here, again, change these colors. So we can have this either be a colored or be like a lighter gray. And then let's add its markers. We're going to, we can make it a different type of marker too, so that it more clarifies the line. We're gonna make it that different color gray. I think that's too light. What color did I use? Three down, third over. Okay. So marker, come in here. Three down, third over. There we go, and no line. So that looks a lot more consistent. You can see in the legend it's showing both of those. We can always come in and delete off the marker again no harm, no foul, if we just want that. I just think the marker kind of makes the points a little clearer, um, but it's up to you and what point you're trying to get across. So we have that. The other thing we can do is if we are gonna delete off the points, do if we're gonna delete off the points is change the dash type of one of the lines. Generally, if I have two, I want one to be a long dash and one to be a shorter dash just so that it's easier for people who can't quite see the colors to tell which is which. So this is pretty clear. I'm gonna, this looks really long and wide. So there's that, kind of center that a little bit more. And here we go. I mean, this is pretty good. Um, we could make this a different color. So we could always come in here and add in like um, a dark red, or something like that. We just wanna make sure that our markers are always matching our color. But overall, this no longer at least looks like an Excel. So pull that year off from that axis a little bit more, maybe even pull the prevalence off from the axis, just a tad, and there you go. So that actually looks pretty good overall um, as, a, as a graph. And then again, you would just go and save it and then you would have it. So finally, I wanna show you how to do error bars. And the way to do error bars is the exact same no matter what the type of plot you're using is. I'm going to actually create a bar plot real, or yeah, a bar chart graph real quick. So just including um, these uh, different disorders and their average prevalence. So I'm going to come insert, we're going to do bar graph, there we go. So that created it really simply, we can remove that um, and add the access title over here and just say um, prevalence percentage. So this is really nice, we have our averages. But what if we actually wanna know, is depression really that different than anxiety or is it just the averages are different? So we wanna see what's the variance within the population. So if we're going to do that, what we need to do is add error bars onto this. And if you are in science, almost all of your charts are going to have error bars on it. So we're going to come up here, add chart elements, and we're going to click on this error bars. And what you can see is now all of these error bars are the exact same height, despite what is going on. Um, and that's just not realistic. So what we wanna do is now click on this 
And so what it's pulling is the standard error. Well, all we've given it is averages, so it can't really find the standard error. Instead, what we need to do is tell it what, it's, what the standard deviations are. So we're gonna click custom and specify value. And then we can come in here and we're going to give it the exact same for both the positive and negative. So it does allow you to change it on the positive and negative if you want to. So now for the depression bar, it's going to bring in this number, but for our anxiety bar, it's gonna bring in this number. So if we click okay, now you can see these are all adjusted, right? So these are all much more what we would want to see um, in regards to actually having error bars. And they're a little hard to see. There we go, I made them a little bit better. But they're a little hard to see just because they are so small given the um, you know amount. So we're, we're looking at like nothing's even 0.1 and we're on a scale of eight, um, zero to 8%. So. That's how you would add in error bars onto any um, access that you're interested in looking at. And on things like scatter plots, if you wanted to add error bars on here, you're gonna see that you actually have the option to add both horizontal. So again, you can go here. You have the option to add both horizontal and vertical error bars. So these are obviously the horizontal and we can just delete those if you don't want them. And if you come up here, there's your vertical. And so you would do the same thing by choosing a different function and coming down to custom and adding a specific value. So that would be how you would do that. Or you can just delete them off if you don't want the error bars like we did before. So that's how to create pie charts, bar charts, scatter plots, and line plots with error bars and grouping. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to format all of these so that they actually look like they would, you would want them to look to actually put in a journal for publication. Don't forget you can download the cheat sheet to figure out how to make all of these. And I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.